A husband and wife from Freeland recently came to testify before the House Public Safety Committee in favor of a bill you introduced that would allow booking photos at jails to be opened to the public. Why was this bill important to them? Right, so this couple brought this bill to me and this idea to me after they weren't able to get the booking photo from the local jail. Um, they had been away from home for a few days and when they returned, they found a steel door in their, in their basement kicked in and, and literally every room in the house was ransacked. Um, everything from jewelry to uh, TVs and VCRs and stuff were, were gone. So it uh, completely violated their sense of safety and security in their own home. And they really just wanted to know who this guy was. The, the sheriff's office was uh, able to quickly identify who the suspect was based on the um, based on the circumstances and, and prior prior burglaries in the area. So they knew who they were looking for, but the, but this family had no idea what the gentleman looked like. You know, so he could have walked up to their door two weeks later and or been walking down the street and they wouldn't have been able to recognize him. So um, that's why this bill became so so important to me. Your bill would allow booking photos to be released once the perpetrator is booked into jail but that's still before charges are filed. Are there concerns with releasing booking photos before charges are filed? Now, I don't personally have that concern. You know, Washington is only one of two states west of the Mississippi that already don't put this information out as part of their jail register. So that's what we're really talking about. The statute that we're addressing is addressing the information that's provided as part of the jail register. So it's not like a couple would necessarily have to file a public disclosure record, uh, request or anything like that. It's just that photo is part of the register. And when it comes down to the concern about um, making these photos available in the jail register before, um, before charging or after charging or after conviction, more often than not, we're talking about re repeat offenders that have already been booked in one jail or another in the region. So um, that information would be available already. The Senate just introduced a transportation revenue package. Now, you've been saying that we need reforms before asking for more money. What's the latest on your transportation reform bills? This is something that I've focused on a lot over the interim. And um, so I have three good reform bills that are going, going forward and moving through the process. All three of them have received hearings, and a couple of them are going to require some amendments to get out of committee, and I'm working on them very hard. One of them is a recycling of concrete and aggregate product to be used on transportation projects throughout the state. And it requires the State Department of Transportation and local jurisdictions to use more and more recycled projects as they go along throughout the years. And this will keep the recycled concrete from ending up in landfills. So this is a good for our environment bill and it's receiving a, a lot of support. A bill that I uh, testified on today in the local government committee is House Bill 1850. And what that bill would do is on our highway traffic maintenance projects like resurfacing, restriping, and projects that don't go outside the footprint, the right of way of that existing roadway or bridge, that they would be able to go through that permitting process and cut off the local review part of it that's already included earlier in the process anyway. So these local jurisdictions, cities and counties typically, already have that, the, that review earlier on. It just cuts off that last step at the end. So out in my district, we currently have a big project going out on the State Route 532 corridor that goes through three different jurisdictions. And that means three different local review processes. Um, that even one local review, review process is already lengthy. Imagine three or four in, in, in certain circumstances. So it's going to really speed up those permit, that permitting process and make it much less expensive. And the third was a bill that we heard in Environment Committee just last week, and that's regarding locally owned county and municipal bridges that have been deemed structurally deficient. You know, the reason we were able to get the Skagit River Bridge up as quickly as we did is that they cut off the SEPA review process off of the permitting and just counted specifically on the NEPA review process. We still had many, many environmental protections in place, but it really sped up that process. I'm really excited to see all three of my reform bills moving forward. If people want more information about these or other bills, what can they do? Well, on the bottom of your screen should be the phone number for my office and you can call down here and talk with myself or my, uh, my legislative assistant, Tanya, or you can go to www.leg.wa.gov 
and look up information on bills, you can see all, uh, all of the bills that any respective representative or senator is bringing.